Hello friends, Tony from Echo Guru returning again. We've had a good look at the machine, we've done a big tidy up of it, we've given it a good good polish over. For most of the machine, I've just used some, um, some multi-purpose cleaner and, uh, and a damp cloth. I've gone over it a second time using a bactericidal wipe, um, just some alco wipes. Now it took me ages, I've probably spent maybe the better part of an hour giving this machine a good polish up. It shouldn't take that long if you've been maintaining it regularly and you're cleaning each week, then it doesn't take you a long time to do a detailed clean. Not like it did on this occasion where we had a lot of stubborn marks on there. Uh, one of my big, uh, big pet hates, you see I've got a lot of pet hates, I'm not into gel, gel holders and I'm not into a lot of things. Uh, the big thing I'm not into though is people putting stickers onto our machines and you end up with that adhesive residue on the machine and that doesn't get cleaned off properly which then um, makes it a, a bit of a yucky spot. So I've taken all that stuff off, I've polished the machine up, I paid particular attention underneath the, um, so the console goes up and down, make sure you get under there where the concertina is of the machine and make sure that you're we're cleaning nicely up in under there. This all stores dust and dirt and can get it quite yucky. We also want to make sure we give a good clean under the console as well. Everyone focuses all their energy on the top side. The underside's just as dirty. I mentioned I don't like the gel holders. I also don't like all of these little things that clip in here. And so we need to make sure that we periodically pull that out and clean right into the clean right into the cavities that that leaves as well, as well as cleaning the parts that we can pull out of those points. Here's the um, gel holder uh, that we saw last week that was really disgusting. That's been cleaned up nicely. Got all the old gel out of that and given that a, a proper clean in some boiling water as well. Now as I go around the machine I'm looking for all the different um, nooks and crannies and crevices that um, the dirt, dust and bacteria can, can hide. And so Again, I'm going to lift up the console up and down, make sure I'm polishing the back of the machine. Along this frame where the, uh, the rear of the machine is normally covered up by the, by the console if it's too high, like that, um, we make sure we drop that down so we can clean in there as well. Uh, I don't like to see pen on my machines. There shouldn't be marks like that. If there is a biro mark that someone's uh, scribbled on a machine, we just need to clean that off and keep our gear looking good. It's not just about looking good from an aesthetics point of view. It's about infection control and also about making sure we get these machines to last as long as we can. This is a 15 year old machine. Um, it looked pretty grubby to start with. Its insides are still working absolutely perfectly and we're going to have a bit of a play with that in the next couple of videos. But if you look after your machine, it's going to look after us. And remember, this is what we're relying on to get good quality data for our, for our studies and for our patients. So we need to make sure that that's the best, um, the best gear that we can have available to us. Um, no one likes to clean a machine. It's, it's a pain. We don't like to clean our filters. Remember last week we cleaned the filters, we tidied up our trackball. And we also cleaned up the gel holders, which I showed you then. Uh, this was a far more detailed clean, getting all the uh, all the scuff marks off, so that it's as um, it's just in as good condition as we can get it. Now, because this is a machine we haven't used for a while, I'm keen to start using this for some training. Get some um, get some trainees playing around on this and doing some some more intensive work, which I'll which I'll include in some videos. Um, because we're going to actually use this. Uh, not for real patients, but for, for training, I do want to make sure that the machine's working properly. And so I'm going to run through a bit of a checklist where I go through to make sure that the, um, the equipment doesn't need any extra maintenance done to it. We can see this monitor is slowly drifting down. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's not holding its height in place. Um, and that needs a little bit of tightening up at the, at the arm there. Some of these things can be done, um, can be done just by tightening them ourselves. Other times it's a non-adjustable part and it needs to be replaced. Um, walking down the corridor to get to the room here, I had the rear wheels locked, so it's a two-wheel steering rather than four-wheel steering, and I still was crab walking along the corridor where I had to basically push the machine on a diagonal, even though the, the, the rear wheels were locked so that it, um, so that it was steering properly. 
Um, so I'm going to uh, get the wheels looked at, try and get this arm adjusted here. I'm happy that the console goes all the way up nice and high and locks into place and goes down nice and low. If this was a machine, a uh, more modern machine, it would also have other degrees of motion of the console. This older machine does not, it only goes up and down. So I guess that's one less thing that can, that can break on us now. Um, I've got a little bit more cleaning to do with these little parts that click in and out um, and the probe holders, make sure they're all tidied up. Other than that, I think it's looking, it's looking pretty clean and pretty tidy and ready for us to um, start getting into some of the more fun things. Next week, we're gonna pop open these boxes, have a look at all the probes we've got, see if we've got any probes which are useful. We'll do some quality testing on the transducers to make sure that they're, that they're adequate. And um, that'll be a fun, fun little box to start playing in. Please drop a, drop a comment in the comments below. Let me know what you use to clean your machine with. What's your cleaning protocol look like? I'd love to hear it. I think we could all uh, learn from each other. So let's get the discussion happening. Um, I've showed you what I use to get the, the main bulky parts off is a cream cleanser followed by cleaning it up then with the alcohol wipes. Um, if I can get some, I'm gonna grab some Milton's uh, spray and spray that on as well to really try and kill any germs that are on this machine. So just a really short video this week. Enjoy the week and uh, we'll chat next week looking at the probes.